This is It Was a Thing on TV. It's a Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the dregs of humanity. Welcome to the It Was a Thing on TV podcast, episode 10, submission 120, The Chimp Channel. The Chimp Channel aired on TBS Superstation from June 10th, 1999 to December 16th, 1999 for a total of 13 episodes. Chico, you know for a long time I've been waiting. I've been dying since we came up with this podcast. I've been dying to discuss this show with you guys. Yes, you have. Couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. Well, the Chimp Channel, I guess the I guess you could say evolved from a series of shorts on TBS that started back on February 1st, 1998 called Monkeyed Movies, which were Films that parodied popular films or television programs that were currently being broadcast on TBS with the use of costume chimpanzees and orangutans voiced by human actors. This would air, this usually would air during a dinner and a movie, like during the commercial breaks. They would have like the short little interstitials of the films that were being aired. Now, do you have any memories of these shorts? Cause I, I, do have, I do have memories of the shorts. Uh, I believe some of them aired on the SMF TV block as well. And for those of you who don't know, SMF TV was Sunday morning in front of the television, where uh, TBS would have the uh, their, their two acquired Hanna Barbera series, which at the time were SWAT cats and two stupid dogs. They would, they would air some of the interstitials when the uh, episodes ran short. Now, Mike, I know you, you told me that you have no memory of the original shorts. I'm just claiming ignorance for this entire episode. I'm going to just sit here and, and be a casual observer. <laughs> well, that's your loss, Mike. Let me tell you. So, in 1998, TBS aired Tom Stern's Monkey Movies. There were 48 segments that were run during dinner and a movie in odd times slots, usually after sporting events. However, one day when a golf tournament ran short, TBS played about a half hour of Monkey Movies to unexpected results. The ratings actually increased, which gave TBS a good idea. How about we expand this concept and make it a regular show? So aiming to a young male audience, TBS would place the Chimp Channel on Thursday nights at 10.05 p.m. That's right, they were still doing Turner Time Baby back in summer of 1989, following the network's top-rated professional wrestling show, WCW Thunder. An April 1999 press release noted the series' original title as Channel of the Apes. Get it? Uh... Boo! However, it, it would be renamed The Chimp Channel, and it would debut on June 10th, 1989. Now, not long into production, the creator of the, sh- the uh, concept of Monkey Movies, a man by the name of Tom Stern, uh, would find himself at odds with TBS management regarding the direction of the series, which led to an incident on March 8, 1999, which he improvised a raunchy performance art feature that involved full nudity and breaking two liquor bottles on the show's set. Stern was promptly fired for the incident, despite claiming that he had permission from network officials to do what he called, 
quote unquote improv comedy described as quote trying to get stuff off my chest about the wrong headed direction this show was taking. On June 9th, one day before the Chimp Channel series premiere, Stern filed a breach of content contract suit against TBS, Warner Brothers Domestic Pay TV, Telescopic Pictures, and Palmar Pictures in LA, seeking damages of $1.65 million. Stern was represented in the suit by Los Angeles attorney David Wall. Production of the series continued for a few more months without its creative founder. Mm-hmm. At what point, if you're TBS, do you just say, you know what, this is such a cluster muck, let's just, you know, take our losses and run? What? Come on, Mike. Okay, now, I I totally get that if that happened, we wouldn't have this installment, but it it just sounds like a mess from the start. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having flashbacks of Lancelot Link Secret Chimp. What's going on here? Well, I was going to mention that, actually, because... Well, I was going to mention uh, Lancelot Link, but also Mr. Smith. I mean, I think... Well, well, I mean, realistically, I mean, those are probably the last two times that a a, uh, a simian, a, a monkey or similar creature, was in a lead position on a TV show. And both of those lasted 13 weeks, or 13 episodes. And... By gosh, how long did Chimp Channel last? Just 13, saying. 13 just, episodes. Just saying. So the show would evolve around a series of skits with interstitials about some of the on-camera stores and behind-the-scenes stores at the Chimp Channel. So here are some of the characters that are on this show. Brock, we have Brock Hammond, a 39-year-old male actor, fitting the self-absorbed masculine archetype Similar to David Hasselhoff, we have George W. Heinlein, who is the Chimp Channel's veteran news anchor. We have Marina, a parody of Pamela Anderson, who is the super sexy blonde actress from the show Tree Watch. Tree Watch. Monkeys in, monkeys in slow motion? Yes. In, in we have Mar- clad swimwear? <laughs> we have Murray Price, who is the undisputed king of all celebrity interviews, who is a parody of, who else? Larry King. He is played by an orangutan. And now we have the behind-the-scenes stars of the Chimp Channel. We have Bernard the Sarcastic Parrot, voiced by the legendary Maurice LaMarche, who is the parrot sidekick of Harry. We have Biff and Stan, who are a veteran writing team who provide material for the plethora of television genres. We have Ford Carter, a 58-year-old Australian self-made gazillionaire who owns the Chimp Channel in addition to newspapers, hotel chains, and other properties. He shares traits with Rupert Murdoch. I was going to say, he he couldn't be like a character of Rupert Murdoch. Australian, owns TV channels and newspapers. No, that's just pure coincidence. (laughs) It's also pure coincidence. Yeah, it's also pure coincidence that... Uh, Rupert Murdoch happens to be a bit of a rival to Ted Turner, who at this time was still, I don't know if he was chairman or CEO, he was still involved with uh, TBS, despite having sold it to Warner Brothers. Yeah, he wouldn't lose all his power until the disastrous ale merger. But do you get that do you, do you, do you the, the character is named Ford Carter? You get it? Ford uh, Order. Yeah. They're presidents. He has yes. a son named Reagan, I guess. I guess he I guess he has a daughter named Reagan, but let's talk about uh something else. Maybe that would have been explored in season two. His daughter would have been named Reagan Bush. And, and, and I hope that she doesn't have a relationship with Clinton. Cause if if there would be Clinton Bush. No, 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 I'm not going there. I'm not going there. We have basically the main character of the show, Timmy Breyer, who is a young, bright-eyed intern at the Chimp Channel. He's a kind of naive young chimp who has a crush for Marina. We have 
Harry Waller, also voiced by Maurice LaMarche, who is the 52-year-old president of the Chimp Channel and a television veteran. And we have Candy Eupens, who is the Chimp Channel's makeup girl. Now, do you know who voiced Candy, the Chimp Channel makeup girl? Uh, that would be Mindy Cohn, a.k.a. Natalie from the Facts of Life, a.k.a. Velma Dinkley. Correct! Wow, now, I, I didn't expect you to guess the put the Velma Subi do reference. So oh, totally. That, oh, I mean, you look you look at all you look at the entire cast. These are all uh, voiceover legends. You have uh, Richard Doyle, Jennifer Hale, Dwight Schultz, Mad Man, Mad Mad Man, Howling Mad Murdoch, yes. Richard Stephen Horvitz, who played Alpha Five on Power Rangers. And uh, Michael Donovan, who did a lot of work in Canada, so a lot, a lot of uh, this had a lot of um, gravitas in the voiceover fields. And say. you've probably got the best in Maurice Lamarche. Yes, yes, the best. And, and speaking of voiceovers, earlier today I found something. Uh, I guess before the uh, premiere of the Chimp Channel. We fa- I found a uh, clip from a WCW satellite feed, because obviously, as I mentioned before, WCW Thunder was the lead-in program to the Chimp Channel. So to plug the Chimp Channel, they had announcers Mike Tanay and Larry Zabisco do voiceover as monkeyed versions of themselves plugging the Chimp Channel. So we watched like five minutes of them recording voiceovers. On YouTube for for the uh for the commercial for the Chimp Channel. Somebody get me a banana. Do we have that clip? And here's the clip in question. It's a little redundant because it's done three or four times, but here it is. Ah, coming up next, right here on the Superstation. It's the missing link in television. It's coming. A wild new series. It's a network composed of monkeys, the Chimp Channel. Somebody, shoot! I thought I had him when he turned. I went. Uh, okay. I was okay. Now yeah, coming up next, right here on the Superstation. It's a missing link in television is coming. It's a wild new series about a network composed of monkeys somebody get me a banana snacks the chimp now nah, that was horrible that was the worst one of all all right so you're gonna keep talking after it goes black no good i want to be out by then i just oh i thought he said you had a couple seconds to go now coming up next right here on the superstation the missing link in television is coming it's a wild new series. It's the Chimp Channel. Next, right here on TBS. Somebody get me a banana. Oh, play the whole thing. Yeah, this is yes. fun. I love this. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be good. Let's go to our counterparts in Hollywood or something. And that'll be this. Hey, legend, isn't it great to be a part of the premiere of the Chimp Channel? Ooh, wait, I can't hear you, Mike. I got cauliflower in my ear. Now, you know, Larry, as of late, I've just been feeling funky like a monkey all the time. Quit listening to Dusty Rhodes. Oh, no, the fans are chanting, Larry, 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 I'm warning you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, no, God. Oh, I can't help it, Mike. They love me. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I can't believe it. Hey, stop it. You're going to make a human human out of yourself. <laughs> oh, Larry, don't go ape on me. What is that gimmick on your butt, a diaper? Oh, coming up next right here on the Superstation. The missing link in television is coming. It's a wild new series. It's the Chimp Channel, next right here on TBS. Somebody get me a banana. <laughs> I think it's as good as it's going to get. I don't think we get a much better to you. No. I thought that was good. 
Oh, I thought that was good. I think so, too. Hey, legend, isn't it great to be a part of the premiere of the Chimp Channel? Ooh, wait, I can't hear you, Mike. I got cauliflower in my ear. Now, you know, Larry, as of late, i just been feeling funky like a monkey all the time. Quit listening to Dusty Rhodes. Oh, no. The fans are chanting, Larry, Larry, Larry. I'm warning you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, I can't help it, Mike. They love me. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I can't believe it. Hey, stop it. You're going to make a human, human out of yourself. Oh, Larry, don't go ape on me. What is that gimmick on your butt? A diaper? Oh, coming up next right here on the Superstation. The Missing Link in television is coming. It's a wild new series. It's the Chimp Channel. Next right here on TBS. Somebody get me a banana. Man. Somebody get him a banana. Somebody get the living legend Larry Zabisco banana, damn it. All right, so we have a, I have a, 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 a review, Mike, from Variety on the Chimp Channel. And you're going to love this, this, the lead. As if human beings telling Liam Monica Winsky jokes was not painful enough. Now we have chimpanzees doing it. Imagine, there are now TV writers earning a living peddling multi-mammal humor. What a clever species we are. Too bad that chimps themselves would be hard-pressed to find this one-joke press anything close to amusing. I must have missed the joke. In the review, the conceit here is that apes are running a cable network called the Chimp Channel, TCC for short. That's all chimps and orangutans all the time. All the movies, series, newscasts, commercials, and promo store, and are produced by apes. The last, unlike bananas, do not come in bunches. The few that emerge trickle out noisily, as if from a leaky faucet. Wow, that sounds very, uh, potassium filled. Based on my experience watching that show, I, I can't uh, disagree. Okay, so so what are your, so Mike, you said you only lasted eight minutes watching the Chimp Channel. So yeah. give us your thoughts on what you saw. Made me want to go back and watch more uh, Auto Man. Oh, wow. I was pondering for creating my own uh, my own sequel to the Zippers episode. I lasted about five, maybe six minutes into the premiere episode, and I there was a a skit they did about Jeopardy, which really was foolish, and then not because it wasn't realistic, but ultimately in the end, all of the chimpanzees or, or the monkeys were um, like swinging on the set. Or doing stupid stuff. It's like, okay, this is funny? Really? I, I just didn't see the humor. But also, and it didn't help that, maybe it's because of those first episode. it took like five minutes, four or five minutes to get just to the opening sequence. I don't know if they were trying to develop some sort of backstory or what they're have probably, you. Yeah, they're probably trying to develop some sort of backstory. But it, w- it took a painfully long time to get to the uh, uh, the opening credits of the first episode. But also, I- I'm going to add one more thing. Uh, since you were talking about the Variety uh, review, uh, I've got another r- review here from um, the Sun Sentinel, uh, Tom Jicha. Apologies if I mispronounced the last name. Uh, claim that the Chimp Channel, quote unquote, the Chimp Channel sounded a lot sounds a lot funnier than it turns out to be on air. An occasional brief skit on a show like SNL or Mad TV, the Chimp Channel might be entertaining. However, Jicha also provided additional insight into the series' predicament, pondering TBS seems to have its days and nights confused. Cleaned up of its occasional Randy references. There's even a snarky shot at Monica Lewinsky. How 1999? That's my editorializing there, the how 1999 part. The Chimp Channel might work for an audience at 10 in the morning on Saturday. At 10 at night on Thursdays, it's a King Kong-sized loser. 
So maybe that's the issue. They were aiming it at the wrong audience, tr- trying to get adults to watch it when maybe it should have been more of a kid's show going back to, like, as Greg said earlier, Lancelot Link. Yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I, I think that kind of – I think it, this show more works in concept on, like, an afternoon or morning show on weekends. Absolutely, and as you mentioned earlier, Hanna-Barbera at the time had, I think you said SWAT cats. SWAT and, cats and two stupid and, dogs. And two stupid, do- two stupid Dogs was on in 1999. I didn't know it ran that long. No, I mean, it, I know it was probably it, reruns, but still. It was reruns, yeah. Right, yeah, because I remember that was like original back in like 94 or so, but uh Maybe they could have put it in that block, put it at 9 or, or, I mean, they even mentioned 10 in the morning. Maybe it would work there, and also if the the, the fare was uh, lightened down to something that kids could enjoy or families could enjoy. I just don't see how this works as a primetime show, especially following wrestling, because you said this followed wrestling, right? Yeah, it followed WCW Thunder on Thursday nights. I just see the two audiences being totally different. I don't see a wrestling audience really enjoying watching chimps making fun of TV or a TV network type of setting. That's just me. I, I think you know, if they uh, rejiggered a little bit uh, and actually made it like a kid's show, maybe it would have lasted longer, but also at the same time, yeah, given how much money TBS put into this, apparently... Do you really want to air a show like that at ten in the morning on Saturdays or Sundays, or or even earlier? Yeah, and and now this leads to uh, sad news. On December fifth, nineteen ninety nine, TBS announced that they were going to cancel the Chimp Channel. TBS decided to shift a number of prime time changes onto their schedule. So WCW Thunder would shift from Thursday night to Wednesday night because this was around the time where WWF SmackDown premiered on UPN, cutting into their audience. And at this time, like they were, WCW was beginning their fall, which would eventually lead to their end and sale to the WWF. And of course, this is late 1999, so this would be the period where bro, bro Vince Russo was the head writer for WCW. So. TBS decided to cancel the Chimp Channel and replace it with back-to-back films of the series Movies for Guys Who Like Movies. And WCW Thunder in, on January of 2000 would be followed in their lead-in program to the next show at 10 o'clock would be the 2000 version of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Do you remember the 2000 version of Ripley's Believe it or not, guys. The one with Dean Dean Kane. Yes. Dean Kane and Kelly Packard. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't Ripley's Believe It or Not in the true sense. I'm sorry. My allegiance for that show goes back to Jack Palance. That was so great in the early '80s. Believe it or not. Well, it it, it almost seemed like it was a, a stunt show more than. What I think, you know, really Ripley, what he's all about, you know, showing amazing you know, medical discoveries or amazing facts and stuff that you just wouldn't believe. It was basically and, along the lines of Guinness Prime Time. That's it. You, you took it right out of my mouth. It's like that's part, exactly it was part, part the Jack, Pala- part Jack Palance and part Mark, Park, part Mark Thompson setting up a challenge. Uh, and, and I think if you balance it out, it wasn't 50-50. I would say it was more like 90-10. I mean, I, I really did not like the uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not series then because, again, like I said, it was more like Guinness Primetime than it was Ripley's Believe It or Not with Jack Palance back in the uh, early to mid-'80s. Mm-hmm. But also another thing of note, Greg, this was TBS's first attempt at a original mm-hmm. comedy. Yes! They did better as time went on. One of my yes. favorite one of my favorite shows, and it only lasted I think about three seasons on TBS, was a show called Ten Items or Less, which itself was sort of a 
I don't want to say ripoff, but in the same vein as check it out back in the eighties with uh, with uh, uh, Don, Don Adams. Adams. Don Adams. I almost said Maxwell possible, Smart. Yeah, possible future entry, by the way. Ooh, you may have to fight me over that one. I like I like check it out too, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. But also, I mean, this is now fifteen years after the Chimp Channel. Actually, even a little bit longer than that. Then they basically made their entire. 10 o'clock lineup comedies. They had Angie Tribeca, which was a great show, but they screwed that up in a number of ways. They had The Detour, which was a great show, but they screwed it up in a number of ways. Uh, And and they had other comedies and and still do have other comedies in there uh, that they run basically one season uh, per year. Yeah, American Dad, which uh, amazingly enough, they have not screwed up just yet uh, american dad they have not screwed up yet god give them points there uh but they did they've... screw up the hour of drop the mic and joker's wild by sending it to tnt but that's neither here nor there they did screw that up and but, uh, they have some other shows miracle workers is coming back from what i saw uh not that i watched it but now it's going to be this season is like medieval themed Miracle Workers, you know, The Last Crusade or something like that. But, again, neither here nor there. Hey, yep. hey, at least Daniel Radcliffe is getting work. True. He's so getting work, and, and also Steve Buscemi. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and, actually, I should also mention one other show, which really was my favorite out of all these comedies, even though I loved Angie Tribeca and I loved The Detour, at least the first couple of seasons. The one show, and I don't know why they dropped it, it was a great show. I thought it had decent ratings. Sullivan and Son. Yeah. Uh, about the Irish family that owned the bar. It had uh, Brian Doyle Murray, and it had the father from um, the Wonder Years. I can't think of his name. Dan. Dan Loria. Dan Loria. Yes, yes, yes. That was a great show. And Steve Byrne and Roy Wood Jr. That, uh, that was, oh, I loved that show. And that just, like, just got canceled, like, with with no... I, I mean, I didn't see anything online about it. That was a great show. I'd love to see that again. That may be where some of my my money may be going to get that through a service or something. Yeah, another another show that... Another block of shows that have replaced the Chip Channel. Possible future entries to include Daisy Does America and He's a Lady. The heck is he's a lady. That's what I'm trying to say the same thing. It is, it is it is basically RuPaul's drag race without the camp. Oh, that's terrible. And then I'm guessing Daisy Does America is like saying Daisy Fuentes? No, Daisy Donovan, British comedian. Travel log through America. Like that hasn't been done in the past. Well, Guys, you know, now that Turner has brought back wrestling on their networks with all elite wrestling on TNT Wednesday nights, I got to ask, guys, do you think that now is the right time for a reboot of the Chimp Channel? Is there ever a right time? Guys, if they can reboot the XFL, I think that anything can be rebooted now at this point. Greg has an amazingly accurate point. They can they could reboot the XFL, by the way, possible future entry. They could I, reboot anything. I, I just this was so insipid. Like I said, I lasted maybe eight minutes and five of it was, you know, setting up the uh the introduction in the first episode and then finally getting to the, to the, uh, to the introduction. So I could get a snap of the title card for our damn graphic. (laughs) But, and then the other three minutes or so, four minutes was that jeopardy parody, which was really ridiculously stupid. You you just thought it was stupid because you didn't like the Roberto Benini thing, which to be honest in 1999 was not even that funny. no, I mean, the categories rhymes with blotocopier. Really? That's not really funny. I'm sorry. 
And then they don't get it yeah, right. Man, that's, oh, that's, I, well, yeah, that's, I was a blotocopier. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty stupid. It, it, it's lame writing. I mean, it, it has nothing to do with you know, Roberto Benigni or the animals climbing the set by the end of the, the skit. There was just no meat on the bone. The meat like, was I never in the same show. I want my game show parodies to be taken seriously, damn it. This I never just... said that. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with, you know, everything needs to be like a real TV show. I never said that. But you're supposed to be a comedy show, at least he was, try he was, delivering on the comedy. He was spoiled by SNL, and I think we all were spoiled by SNL, especially SNL in the mid '90s, in the early to mid-90s. No, I was a mad TV person at this time. I, I did not watch SNL in the time of Sherry O'Terry and, and Will Ferrell and all that. Once the the cast really got turned over in, like, 96, 97, nope, mad TV is where I went. Hey, but I do it. like a good Sherry O'Terry doing Judge Judy. That hey, is funny. Hey, guys, do you want to see my sword swords collection? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I guess that that's going to have to do it. Sadly, this episode is going to come to an end, but I feel like I feel like we've given this show the do it this show the Chimp Channel the do it deserves. I think people are finally going to be happy that someone out there is showing some love to the Chimp Channel. So Greg, are you trying to tell us that the Chimp Channel it was definitely something on TV? It was a th- thing on tv mike it, it definitely was a thing on tv maybe not a thing that a lot of us saw but it was a thing 20 years ago yes so we're gonna be back later this week with another episode and uh we'll give it away it is speaking of jeopardy and speaking of shows we got a show for you from the early 1980s involving alex trebek and mike you it's know. not Malcolm. <laughs> oh God. man! Hold up! No, hold no, up. that's hold up. No, wait. No, no, no. Malcolm is Malcolm is reserved for the. It was almost the thing on television special. Hold up! Our audience doesn't even know what Malcolm is, so we're gonna save that for later. But next yes, they week, do. Our audience is smart. <laughs> not everyone listening to this podcast <laughs> is a game show fan, Mike. Go to YouTube, search Malcolm Game Show. You'll thank us later. <laughs> Next week, we will... Well, well later this week, we will be talking about the short-lived 1981 Canadian-produced game show, Pitfall. That was definitely a thing on television. And it might have actually had a worse ending than Malcolm. Oh, wow. But, but we'll get to that later. Yes. Uh, just remember, we're on social media. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. Everywhere. We are everywhere. We're everywhere. It was a thing on TV.com. That'll take you to the podcast page. And then from there, you can go to our Facebook and our Instagram and our Twitter and our Tumblr. And I think we just started a, a Tinder uh, profile there. So you can you know swipe on our our two month old podcast and swipe right. And then we'll go out on a date and we'll never talk about it again after that. Just look for the, just look for Mr. Smith in the profile picture. <laughs> oh, look for Bobo. <laughs> hey guys, I gotta ask, do you think we're on Friendster? I think we're still on MySpace. I think we're still on six degrees actually. Yeah, let, let me make sure that our live journal is still working. I don't know. The Russians may have taken it down a while back. You never know. This was uh, definitely not the thing on TV, you American bastards. We'll be back later this week, of course, to talk about Pitfall with Alex Trebek. So until next time, I'm Greg Dieter, and that has been Mike Klaus and Chico Alexander, and we will see you later this week for Pitfall. Somebody get me a banana, guys. (laughs) The Chimp Channel. I actually did that. Oh, no. (laughs) You were gonna...
like. Yeah. Somebody get you a banana. Hold on a second. Hold on. Yeah, Mom? Are you talking about the chip channel again, Greg? I told you to get out of your system 15 years ago. All right, all right. Let's, all right. Let's, let's. Uh, Pick it up. Three. <laughs> Wait, no, no. That's at the, okay, that's at the end first off. I don't know if Greg heard what I said. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, you're not fighting out to the end, big guy. Oh. <laughs> 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 and let's, and we're back in. Oh, no, I want to know what you said. <laughs> so you said, hold on, guys. My mom's calling me. And I said, Craig, are you talking about the chimp channel again? I told you to let go of that 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that is so staying in. No, no, that is not staying in. <laughs> Dude, it is. I'm the editor. <laughs> Okay, maybe it won't. Uh, good. <laughs> it's damn funny. And we're back up. Okay, all right. So do you want to... <laughs> Hold on. So you guys want to know Stop about the Stop around, Greg. Oh, my God. 